I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, it's a wonderful November Sunday, November after the uh, Clemson South Carolina game. Un unfortunately, our Tigers came out uh, unexpectedly <laughs> a one point loss. Congrats to the Gamecocks. Trust me, it makes me throw up a little bit to say that, but it, it, it is what it is. And uh, I did a video on that yesterday. Talk a little more. If you're brand new here, this is the I'm not, or it, this, I'm Brian Knight. I'm not Bobby Durkins. I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. I think yesterday really did a lot to me. Uh, so if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, uh, uh, hit the notifications. Pass along to anyone who likes to talk uh, uh, Clemson football, college football, and especially if you're a Gamecock fan, you, you'll definitely enjoy the past few days of some of the content that I put up. So uh, the name of this video focuses on uh, Brandon Streeter's comments after, after the game yesterday. Now, um, I'm just going to dive in to what he said. I will make a couple of uh, prefaces, uh, and and you'll you'll see why. Because we've got to talk about the truth, and, we, and when you're talking about the truth with an organization, with someone personally, just well, just to be quite honest, uh, people get really defensive. People can get hurt. People can get really personal, and it's really it, it can get really really muddy. So. Let's dive into the statements. This was a video, and in fact, I linked the video. It's a short clip of it. You can go to TigerNet and find this. I have no association with TigerNet. In fact, I've heard some rumors. I don't know if this is true. You know how rumors are. I've heard that some uh, uh, someone within either TigerNet or someone at the Roar has said some things about Bobby Durkin, said stay away from them. Well, here's the thing. If anybody believes Bobby Durkin's is a real individual, they have more problems than disliking my channel. So uh, I don't know if that's true, but I am going to tell you my source is TigerNet. There's a longer version of this clip, but the the the, um, the clip where Streeter gets really irritated is when a que he's asked a question about why didn't they pull DJ. So I'm going to read something from, um, from All Clemson Fan Nation, and this is uh, – this is what it says. You uh, uh, Uyunglele, blah, 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 blah. I always feel like I need to fall apart there, had perhaps his worst game from a statistical standpoint at Memorial Stadium as the junior completed 8 of 29 passes for 99 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Now, the question was posed to um, Streeter in the post game, and the, the, the question was asked, did you ever think about taking him out of the game uh, and putting in club Nick? And Streeter responded, quote, no, DJ has been our leader, man, said Streeter when responding to the question. Hey, there were a lot of drops tonight. That isn't freaking DJ's fault. There were other people on the field. It's not just DJ. DJ ran his, and I'll edit, his butt off. Now, here's the preface time. Uh, when we talk about things, I said this earlier and I'm going to try to make this fast because I, I don't want anybody clicking out of this, but I want to make this very, very clear. I'm not talking about Brandon, Brandon Streeter's family. I'm not knocking uh, Brandon Streeter as an individual. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, you need to terrorize his family. You need to talk terrible about him. Uh, you, you, we get too personal about this stuff. As much as I love this, you see this, you see this. Heck, if you can even see this behind you. I love my Tigers, but at the end of the day, this is a game. This is a game that is literally consists of 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 year old uh, guys that had they not been on the football field, you would just count them as your everyday young idiot. And so when I, when I talk about this, we need to realize that this is a game we get very passionate about. There's a lot of tradition, but at the end of the day, it is a game. With that said, these coaches' salaries, and I have it in the bottom here, I want you to see the coaches' salaries. I want you to see that. I want you to look at that. All right. I want you to see the coaches' salaries there. Brandon Streeter has paid $925,000 to coach a game, a game that is built on 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And then if you're Stetson Bennett, 30 year old quarterback, to, to come out and play a game. Clemson is not deficient when it comes to talent. They have four and five star talents everywhere, everywhere. 
So that's no excuse. DJ was in some in some uh, circles the number one, number two quarterback coming out of high school. So we're not playing with it with a chump. Okay, uh, the the question is thrown at Mr. Million Dollars a Year, basically. And let me throw this out there as well. If you want to go research this, go Google it. I, I dare you. The me, According to the Census Bureau, from 2016 to 2020, of course, it's not counting the inflation that we have, that we're having to deal with now. Um, but the median salary for the state of South Carolina, the median salary is $54,000, but like $54,825, something right now. So before all of you come out here and you, you want to bomb me for saying something about this, just realize it would take you almost 17 years working whatever job, if you earn that much, if you earn more, you'll, you, it'll be less. But even if you earn $100,000 a year, you would have to work almost 10 years at whatever you do to earn what this guy earns calling some of the most mundane, subpar, lackluster, uncreative plays. I have never seen talent go to waste as we have seen it since Trevor Lawrence was a freshman. Trevor Lawrence was a freshman. And he was the best he ever was at Clemson. The next season, he didn't progress. The next season, he didn't progress. They were so talented that Tony Elliott could call plays. And everybody says, well, Tony Elliott was calling plays. Why, why, what was the big deal with Jeff Scott? You know, Jeff Scott didn't call the plays. He helped design the plays. Jeff Scott can coach his butt off. And so Tony Elliott hid behind the talent of a once-in-a-lifetime Trevor Lawrence and Travis Cetien and T. Higgins all being on the same field and more. Amari Rogers, we can keep going, folks. If you want to keep playing this game, we can do it. Was on the same flipping field at the same time. I could go to the local 3A school down the road, get a decent coordinator, offensive coordinator, and say, coach those guys. It's not that hard. So if Brandon Streeter was let go tomorrow, he's making 16 times more than what you will make in a year if you meet that median salary. So he's not going to be in a cheese line. His family's not going to be out begging for bread. His kids are not going to have to go out and sell drugs. In fact, he'll probably end up at another school making half a million dollars a year. Streeter is not cut out for this job, but this response he had, and if you go watch it, it's frightening. It's scary that someone, and I'll tell you, I tell you what's crazy, and I've said this at the beginning of this season when they when when uh the end of last season when Sweeney announced that he was going to uh, move Brandon Streeter to call an uh call an offensive place. I made a video as Bobby Durkins, but what I said I meant that. It really freaked me out how uh, Brandon Streeter spoke. Now, I've worked in the corporate world. I've worked in very large businesses, plus 10,000 uh, employee businesses or one business that was like that. And then I've worked in basically a mom and pop organization, you know, where there's 10 or less employees. I want you to think back in your experience, whether you're a Clemson fan or not. I just want you to pause here. We're just talking pure football here. We're talking pure life. Anytime you run into someone who is moving their way up through the ranks and you're like, well, you know, maybe they could be good. And But it's like there's more qualified people out there. Why is this person moving up? And then you hear their interview, like we heard Brandon Streeter's interview. And his interview was the talking points of Dabo Sweeney. In everyday world, we call it a kiss up. They know how to, to move through the organization. Why? Because they know what to say to the people who will promote them. And that is exactly what I feared. I made that very clear. And then, of course, at the beginning of the season, I started this channel. I started this channel just to kind of have moments like this where I'm not having to do them. You know, I'm just talking football. And I said that it, I, I was watching him because that didn't that that interview 
it made all of my alarms that's had to deal with people like that who were not qualified for their job, but they were my boss. They could fire me, but they were not good at what they do. I, I, I mean, the alarms were going off. Then it got midway through the season. I said, well, maybe I misjudged this guy. No, I nailed it right off the bat. And that response yesterday, first of all, I want to tell you, and I've made this very clear, DJ, I don't believe is fully the problem, folks. I don't. This is what we're getting out of the Clemson camp. This is this is what we're getting out of the Clemson camp, okay? I am hearing conflicting reports. That the reason that that Streeter is calling the plays as he's playing is because the wide receivers are either not good enough. We have four and five star talent everywhere. I'll get to that in a second. DJ's not comfortable enough. Okay, this is year two of him being a full starter. Or this is the one that I think is the truth, but it's rarely said. This is just the way Streeter calls plays. Well, he was good when he was at Richmond. You're not at Richmond, dude. You're one of the top programs in the country until the past few years. Running it to the ground. And you're right, Parker. Yes, men. These are yes, men. These are the people. These are the people who will say and do anything to get a promotion and they'll run the thing into the ground. They'll run the ship into the lighthouse just because they don't know what they're doing, but they've made the captain believe they know how to steer a ship, and they don't. And I well, here's well, here's a response. Let's respond. Let's respond to those things that get leaked out. Well, the receivers drop balls. He is right. Yesterday when he said, when I saw E.J. Uh, Williams drop the ball on a four minutes left, and then he kind of stood up and it was like, oh, well, man. I was like, dude, what's happened to you? When you were a freshman, you were incredible. I thought you were the second coming. And my God, what's wrong with you? And if he's injured, he shouldn't be out on the field. Adam Randall, top recruit coming out of high school. He's had a few good catches. Other than that, nothing. Ngata had some really good catches. Started to seem like he was catching on. Nothing. Bo Collins has had injuries. Bo Collins is the only one who has consistently shown up, uh, shown up, and if he didn't, he was injured. Davis Allen, fantastic. Didn't target him on a streak down the sideline? How dumb is that? And then we find out that DJ was hurt the entire time. And maybe couldn't have went through the entire progression. What was he doing out on the field? Brenning Stowe, six foot seven, is a beast. Did they target him? Maybe once. Folks, this is not these 18 through 22 year olds. This is the coaches, the guys who are paid. Let me see. Let's go back. Uh, Sweeney, well over $10 million a year. Um, Brandon Streeter, $925,000 a year. Mike Reed, $750,000. He's an assistant coach, special teams, cornerbacks. Uh, we've got uh, um, uh, tight ends coach Kyle Richardson. By the way, someone told me this, and I want someone to please tell me whether this is true or not. Anytime you see a really good like streak across, not streak, uh, a slant or post across the middle, especially when they're hitting the tight ends, we've seen some incredible plays that that's actually Richardson calling the play. It's not, it's not, uh, um, it's not Streeter. All right, that's someone told me that who has a very very close relationship to some players who are currently there right now. I would not doubt it. Um, let me see. C.J. Spiller, $450,000 to coach the running backs. T uh, Tyler Grisham, $450,000 to coach those four- and five-star wide receivers that can't fight for the ball and barely will block downfield and looks like they don't want to be there. Thomas Austin, $450,000 speed offensive line coach. I do believe that this is his first year. Folks, here's what I'm telling you. 
Sweeney's method that got him to become the Dabo Sweeney that everybody, when they hear Dabo Sweeney, they go, well, that's, that's a weird name. He was, what is that? You know? And then Sean McDonough still can't pronounce Dabo Sweeney's name. He still calls him Dabo. I don't know if that is the, you know, living up there, uh, uh, you know, up there in Syracuse for all those years. And, and he, you know, he, he can't pronounce, but it's Dabo Sweeney. Uh, and I agree with you, Parker. I don't want Dabo fired. That's that's not what I'm talking about. But the guys below him, he is not he is not hiring the way that he hired to get him to where he's at today. Because with, with his current hiring techniques, he would have never hired uh, um, Chad Morris, uh, Brent Venables. That would have been out of the question. That would have been totally out of the question. And it is Dabo Sweeney's responsibility to hire coaches who can do this. Can you imagine if Sweeney, if Sweeney fired Brandon Streeter tomorrow or demoted him? Let's just say that. Let's just take him and let's just say, you know what, man? You're not an OC, or at least not here you're not. You know, maybe Richmond would like to have you back. Put him to, uh, to coaching uh, a position. I can't say you should be a quarterback coach because between me and you, you know, he this is his first year being an OC. Um, he didn't develop Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence, once again, was just as just exactly who he is. Didn't develop Kelly Bryant, which Kelly Bryant should have switched to another position. He's a fantastic athlete. He just wasn't a quarterback. He could be making tons of money right now. Um. Uh, Tyson uh, Pomachu, Fomacha, I, I don't know. If I have to, if I almost having to choke to say your name, just just give me some grace here. Uh, he was a four star recruit coming out of high school. Did they develop him? No. He transferred to Georgia Tech, and I don't even know where he's at. Uh, DJ has far from been developed. I mean, one minute that guy will throw a pass, no matter no matter what you think, and, and that's one thing I have been critical of DJ. But I will tell you this: DJ is not the problem here, folks. If if DJ is so bad that you can't trust him to run a playbook that he's had for now three years, I mean, his second second year being a full time starter, and then backing up the great Trevor Lawrence. If you if you can't trust him now. Either that's on you for not giving him a better playbook to run with or explaining it, making him understand, or it's on you for not replacing him. And you could have said last year you didn't have anybody. Well, what about Tyson Fomacha? Pumachu, whatever. What would you say Pumachu? I think it's Pumachu. Something like that. Who cares? I don't know. I mean, no offense to him. But that guy looked as lost and clueless, and he'd been out there. He knew the playbook. He knew the Clemson way, and if he didn't, it's either on him or on the coaches or on both of them. This year, you have Cade Flippin' Klubnik sitting, sitting, and you won't put him in? So if DJ is not, if DJ's not the man, you're going to set a five-star that could easily trans transfer out. And I know the transfer portal is not big in Clemson, but it's big everywhere else. Have you ever heard of Southern Cal? I think they're going to the college football playoff unless something stupid happens. That literally, literally just happened. I mean, a year ago, they were firing their coach like three or four games in. Lincoln Riley comes in, and he says, you know what? I'm just going to go to the portal and pick up all these guys. I'm going to go pick up these guys. And guess what? They they manhandled the same Notre Dame team that manhandled us. Folks, this is coaching. I'm not going to blame DJ for this. Well, he was he was eight of twenty-nine. Did you see the plays that they were calling for him? And then once again, I will not relent. If he is not the man, bench him. And put in the five star. The, that comment and the attitude that it was said reminds me of someone that I, there's a couple of people in mind right now that I used to work with. 
that they were a yes man. They made their way, started making their way through the ranks. And any time, listen to me, any time that, that, that someone had the audacity to say something to their face, they had the same response and the same attitude. It was attitude. The voice inflections that Brandon Streeter had yesterday when he was asked, well, did you even consider pulling him out? And he had that little hissy fit where he was blown away that anybody would ask that question. And I don't know who asked the question. I've heard a couple of people say who who they said who it was. I'm not even going to mention their name because, you know, some people get petty and they say this, that, and the other. I don't know. I will say this. The great follow-up question we looked at him and said, well, I see you're uh, upset and stuff, but that's a valid question. Did you not think about switching up the play calling, Mr. $925,000 a year to call mundane plays that I could go to your local high school and see called? $925,000 for that type of play calling, folks. And we didn't go after Joe Brady. You know, Joe Brady, the guy who took over um, that one year on the offense for LSU, took an average quarterback like Joe Burrow. He was an average transfer quarterback. I know history now. Oh, man, who did at the time he wasn't. They had Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and everything, but they uh, they had them the year before. And nothing special happened. Joe Brady comes in, calls the plays, works with the quarterback, develops him, develops that, and we saw what happened. They were completely unstoppable. And we were one of the beneficiaries of that, by the way. Up 17-7 to seven and poor coaching then, Tony Elliott going, we forsook the run too early. Yeah, Tony, you think? You only had, I don't know, Travis Cetien playing running back for you. I guess you needed God back there before you would think that, that that's what I'm telling you folks. This is poor coaching and this is poor hiring by Sweeney. Early Dabo Sweeney would have not hired these guys to revamp Clemson. He wouldn't have, but now he will. And that is what is even more frightening than the comments that Brandon Streeter made yesterday. Now, of course, look, Look, if you're if if you're somebody who you're just you just think that DJ is all you know he's just all the problem, you have a very low football IQ. He's not all the problem. Uh, I I think that it, it it let's just say that he is let's just say that Streeter doesn't feel comfortable with him. Guess what? Bench him. That's what you're paid basically a million dollars a year to do. Bench him. You're not helping the young man whatsoever. If he's not, but I'm telling you, some of the passes I've seen that guy throw, it's a development issue. It's a coaching problem. The wide receivers don't believe in your scheme. They're not aggressive because they don't believe in it. They know it's a crock of crap. So uh, I'm, I'm quite honestly, folks, until I see Sweeney come up and say, you know what? We're we're um, we're going to de demote him. You know, you don't have to fire him. Just put him put him somewhere else. But he's nowhere near the play calling. And we're we're going to bring in uh, a, an offensive guru, someone who really, really, really knows what they're doing. Not somebody who used to play at Clemson. Not someone who has I'm all in tattooed on their right and left butt cheek. No, I'm bringing in someone who knows exactly what they're doing. They're highly sought after. I'm bringing them in. Until he does that, folks, I hope we lose to North Carolina in the ACC championship to wake him up, get him out of his slumber. Because if the Sweeney that made himself successful comes back, that loss wouldn't happen yesterday. The loss to Notre Dame wouldn't happen. And we'd have a few more, we'd have at least one more national championship. Uh, Under our belt, at least one more with Trevor Lawrence and and Travis Etienne and T. Higgins and Isaiah Simmons on the other side. And I mean, it's just it's just when you sit there and you start. And, and I said this yesterday in 10 to 15 years, uh, you are going to be able you in 10 to 15 years. 
our kids will be looking back at this roster going, they were on that team? Yeah, so-and-so, K.J. Henry was on that team. Yeah, yeah, he was on that team. You mean Will Shipley was on that team? Yeah, he was He was, uh, He was. was on that team. Davis Allen was on that? Yep. Brenning still? Yeah, he was on that team. And y'all lost that game? Yeah, we did. Didn't have to. Didn't have to. Uh, South Carolina took advantage of what was given to them. I don't blame them. Uh, that was that is a big thing to look at with Shane Beamer. I think Shane Beamer is the version of Dabo that became successful, uh, and and I think if you're a Gamecock fan, you should have a lot of hope that Shane Beamer, if he follows through on it with this same approach and attitude, there's a great chance that sh- that you guys could actually um, do quite well and continue to build. And these past two weeks not be a fluke, you know. Considering three weeks ago you got blown out by a Florida team. And that's only three weeks ago. So that does tell me there's still a lot of work to be done. You did win, but Clemson should have never given you two turnovers. Clemson should have should have never played around like they played around. But you know what? They did. The most important part, if you're a Gamecock fan, is that Clemson actually uh, – or that uh, the Gamecocks actually took advantage on it. And get this, they capitalized on mistakes made by another team. That's the marks of a team that is getting better. Clemson turning over the ball like they did, the coaching, uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Even Wes Goodwin, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really shocked because on the, I said this yesterday, but I'm going to say it again, on that massive jumbo screen that they just put in, everybody's going crazy about. Over in the bottom left-hand corner, you can actually see the live stats as they're running. Anybody who has who – has, Who's even paying attention? Could have looked up and saw that off that offensively, South Carolina couldn't run the ball. I know Marshawn Lynch wasn't in the game. No big deal. You're we're, you're you're going up against whoever you're going up against. They couldn't run the ball. What does Clemson do? They keep crowding the line as though there's some type of run threat while getting burned in there for at that time about 225 yards. Spencer Rattler finished with what 360. He threw for 360, and he also. Through two interceptions, South Carolina could have beat us by another touchdown. Now, one South Carolina fan said, we could have beat y'all by three touchdowns. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You could beat us by another touchdown, but I think you need to stop drinking. You've been celebrating too long. You've lost your mind. Uh, you, you, you legitimately could have beat us by eight points instead of just one. But a, a win is a win in this uh, situation with Clemson. Sweeney, I beg Sweeney. If I could sit down with Sweeney and look at him and say, I know you're not going to listen to me because I'm a nobody here. How would Sweeney in 2012 approach this? You would fire Streeter right now. And you would find the best offensive minds. You would meet with them. You'd see if you like them, kind of like you did with Venables. They spent some time around him. Hey, you know, we, we just want to see if we're going to hit it off. And they hired him. And I'll guarantee you in the next few years, we'd have another national championship. Guarantee it. It's not that we lost yesterday. It's the way we lost. And it was the attitude after we lost that that it was just like, well, this happens. This happens. And and I'm going to finish this out. We're at 30 minutes. I went way over as I normally do. As, <laughs> and I try not to go over. And I'm going to go through and say hello to some people here in the in the comment section. Once again, pass this along to anyone who likes to talk Clemson football as well as uh, uh, any forums that you're part of because I really like to dig in. you got to remember me. I don't have press con- credentials, so I don't have to worry about saying something that Clemson's not going to like and that they're going to get rid of me and take my my press my press credentials away. Oh, better play by the rules because if you play by the rules, you can let Brandon Streeter buy with his response. The response or the follow-up question to him was, well, why didn't you call different plays? Because I knew the play, but I was calling the plays before before they were even – doing them. And if you got mad there, you could say, well, then it's either DJ or it's you or it's both of you. And so that that's why I like having this channel. But uh, one of one of the things that I will throw out there, just, you know, finishing up, and I want to say this and be, be very, very clear. If I could look at Sweeney and tell him, Sweeney, 2012, you would, would make the right hires. That's what you would do. And uh, you're not operating that way now. And you're what's going to happen is you're going to start to lose recruits. 
What's going to happen is you might even sign those recruits and they come in, stay one season, maybe two seasons, but they're not going to be developed. And they're going to they're going to leave. They're going to leave. I'm sorry. They're going to leave. You can sit there and you can talk about how you want to turn them into great young men, and we should. But these guys want to go on and play football. They don't want to get, you know, a good honorable job, you know, maybe as a supervisor down at Michelin or at the, you know, one of the local places. I'm just telling you, folks, that's not why people go to Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson, now Southern Cal. They go there to become pro athletes to make more in two years than what they would make in 50 years of working a regular job. That's just it. Whether you like that or not, that's just the truth. And um, I'm, I'm just not seeing anything, any response from this. Uh, um, I'm not I'm not seeing any any response from this coaching staff, especially on the offensive side and from even Swinney himself, who I'm a big fan of. But I, this way he's coaching now and the way he's bringing in or he's solidifying, ke- keeping these coaches who has no business. Once again, the, the original Dabo Swinney would have never, ever, ever hired Brandon Streeter to be his OC. He wouldn't have hired uh, um, um, a lot of the people I believe in the organization right now. But he has now become so focused on culture that he's going to lose his football team. He's going to lose his football team. And it does not have to be that way. But until it does, South Carolina will be the recipient of poor play and they will capitalize. And this won't be the last win by South Carolina if things continue on this nature. Uh, and you can go ahead and put it in the books. Clemson will lose to North Carolina if if they play even anything remotely. If Now, if North Carolina can't stop the run, we'll have a pretty good shot at winning the, the game. The only sad thing about it is, is, is – uh, you know, Sweeney will say, well, look, 10 wins in conference championship. I got it for you. And it's like, yeah, but we see the team is doing this. They're not going up. They're going down. And it's it doesn't have to be that way, uh, especially with the athletes that we have. I'm going to go through here and say hello to a lot of you. Thank you so much. I have 54 people in here, only 17 thumbs up. I don't know if anybody uh, does not not, uh, well, like, Whatever. Anyway, uh, Parker Henderson, it's good to see you. Talked to you last night. It's good to see you. Will Jones. Will Jones, it's good to see you. Yes, yes, there is a meme going around. And my cousin Jonathan, Jonathan Knott's in here. Good to see you. Uh, Jonathan actually sent this to me. I wish I, you probably can't see it. But uh, um, it's, a, it's a screenshot, and it shows Cade Klubnick's face. And it says, missing person, Cade Klubnick, please contact Dabo Sweeney if cited. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, what, what what would really fix everybody is if, if Klubnick came up and said he was transferring. You want to talk about losing their minds? Um, it, it, that, that would fix a lot. Kayla Thompson's in here, my sweet sister, but although I'm thinking that's my nephew who's commenting. Um, SEC dog, always stirring the pot, my friend. Always stirring the uh, uh, the pot. It's good to see you in here, Parker Henderson. As I said, Saint Germain got James Massengale. Uh, of course, uh, having fun with picking at us. Uh, we got RR in here, Bad Loafer, uh, Gamecock Bam. Let's see. Adam Waterford. They've developed the family culture to the point where it's become less of a business and the hires were were a cause of that. Uh, yeah. 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 Nobody wants to be part of a culture that's full of a, like of a bunch of rapists like, uh, you know, Georgia. But people also don't want to go to a supposed football school who doesn't focus on football anymore. Uh, let's see. Neon Dion's in here. Tiger fan from Sooner Lance. Good to see you. James Scott. Uh, let's see. Yes, yes, you're you're right, SEC dog. Uh, do post this in any forums that you're part of, and uh, I do appreciate you uh, passing along. My closing thought is I don't think we're going to see any change. It would take us losing the ACC championship uh, for us to see a change. 
I think right now the 10 win season, um, uh, being able to talk about, well, at least we had that long streak, even though it ended yesterday. I know everybody's disappointed. I know more, uh, the normal coaching talking points. Nobody's more disappointed than I am. All coaches say that after a loss. Uh, our team's down. They're hurting, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that means absolutely nothing. You have to step back and say, of course you're hurting. If somebody punched me in the face, I'd be hurting and I'd be mad. How do I respond? And the, the way Clemson needs to respond is they need to look at all their coaches, especially on the offensive side, and they need to realize that they're not developing talent. They've lost interest. The play calling is mundane. And the thing is they could fix it by just hiring someone who knows what they're doing uh, and, and, and has a fresh approach to the game and won't be a yes man who will look at Sweeney and say, hey, I know you built this thing, but you're tearing it down. Do you want me to fix it? And if the answer is yes, hire me. If you want me to come in here and have uh, all in tattooed uh, across my kneecaps, I'm not doing it um, because I'm not all in to, to to I'm not all in to just mediocrity for the sake of, you know, family. Um, that sounds almost more like a cult than a family. So, all right. Well, listen, y'all, you take care of yourselves. Hit the subscribe button. It's free. It's not like I'm rummaging through your bank account. Hit the subscribe button. Hit thumbs up. Pass it along. I'm Brian Knight. I'm not Bobby Durkins. And as hard as this and annoying as I, as as annoyed as I am, go Tigers.